Oops, please welcome John Fisher. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Destiny, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, and i um, happy to, uh, to be here and talk to you about crafting an elevator speech, which is uh, something that we all need to be uh, um, doing a little bit better uh, as we go through here. So, uh, Destin, if you'll forward to the next slide. So the, uh, the idea here is um, getting, some, um, getting some ideas about elevator speeches. Uh, some, the, uh, the purpose of an elevator speech, if you think about it, is to really get someone to hire you, uh, hire you either for a job or for a project or for um, doing something that uh, you want to do. And so our objectives here are to really um, look at your current elevator speech and, and build an improved one based on our uh, criteria here. So if you have, go to the next slide. Um, and then click again, Destiny. So this is um, my background, classic sort of um, very busy bullet point slide. But what I've learned in my 35 years is if you can't get their attention, you're not going to get the job. Uh, and so one of the things that happens is that we're so um, absorbed in the details that sometimes we forget to provide an overview or to provide an, an easy way for people to understand what it is that we bring to the table here. So go to the next slide. So the, um, you want to sell something, and, and in this case, you're selling your product, your service, yourself, uh, and if you don't have a value proposition, if you don't have a compelling value to bring to the table, you're going to be competing on price. And um, believe me, no one wants to compete on price. The idea is we should always be competing on value. So go to the next slide now. Um, so question, and we're going to do a poll here, I think, in a, a few seconds. How much time do you think you have to make an impression on someone? Uh, and here is uh, the options. Here's the poll. So the average attention span of a human being here is at three seconds, eight seconds, a minute, three minutes, or five minutes. Please vote, and then we will um, get the results back. So that should give people enough time to uh, have clicked on here. Destiny, do we have the results? Look at that. Most people, 48% say eight seconds, um, which I think is, uh, uh, is, is pretty close to right here. Can you go to the next slide? And so here you go. So someone did a study, don't know who, but they uh, said that in 2000, our attention span was 12 seconds. Uh, and in 2013, and that was the latest that I could find, our attention span had dropped to eight seconds. And just as a comparison, the average goldfish has an attention span of nine seconds. Uh, don't, don't ask me how they test a goldfish's attention span. But the bottom line here is that you don't have a whole lot of time to, uh, to get someone's attention here. And so uh, next slide. So what I like, to, the way I like to look at this is um, that um, we are given what I call passing chances to tell people who we are. Uh, you get a lot of times where you meet someone, you're at an event, you're at a dinner, you're at a breakfast, you're at a networking session, you're someplace, and uh, somebody says, uh, hey, uh, what is it that you do? And so what, what do you say when that, uh, when that happens? And Destiny, can you go to the next one, please? So I want you to think about how you would normally introduce yourself. And instead of eight seconds, we can do a minute, um, but in, I believe we have a facility for you to type in um, your, um, your elevator speech here uh, into, the, uh, into the chat box. And uh, 
So the question I always ask on this, if you click again, Destiny, um, how's that been working out for you? Um, in other words, is it uh, click again? Is it too short? Is it too long? Um, is it um, too common? Now, what does that mean? It mean? Is it something that is ordinary or something that is predictable? And if it is, um, then you're not really gonna get somebody's attention. And that's the purpose of an elevator speech. So let's go to the next slide. Here's a lovely couple. And um, he's saying, uh, this is a networking event, and he's saying, hey, I'm a director of performance and business support solutions to capitalize on mobile delivery technology for informational providers. And she says, wow, I specialize in digital content learning and multi-platform productions for information aggregators. We should hang out. So have you ever been in a situation like that uh, where somebody's talking and you have no idea what they're talking about in terms of what they do? Uh, these people obviously had some idea of, uh, uh, of what they were talking about, but I don't think anyone else in the room really understood what they were, uh, what they were doing. So the thing is, we want to avoid that. So if we can go to the next slide. The, um, the idea here is, what value do you bring into your client's world? And your client can be a lot of different things. It could be someone that may want to hire you for a full-time job. It could be uh, someone that wants you to work in there as a volunteer in their organization. Um, but the, the idea is that you need to ask yourself, how do you bring value in there? And how do they view you now? And how do you want them to view you? In other words, they've just met you. Do you want to make a better impression on them? And keep in mind, the last bullet point here is that people want solutions, not products. Um, the, um, the classic example of this, if you go to the next slide, is that uh, Theodore uh, Levitt, who is an expert on marketing, always said, people don't want to buy a quarter-inch drill. They want a quarter-inch hole. Uh, and they have to buy the drill in order to get the quarter-inch hole, but they don't really want that they put that away somewhere and maybe use it once or twice a year but they really want the whole and so the idea here is to look for what job people need to be done and not um not particularly a product right so a lot of times we sell ourselves as a product or we sell our services as a product and what we really should look at is how how are these people what are these people looking for and they want to hire some solution to get a pro to get uh, to get something done here. So this brings us to the next slide. And the question here is, um, you know, how many uh, how how do people make decisions about whether or not they want to use you, whether or not they want to hire you? Um, most people make their decisions based on click again emotions and click again, and they try to justify their decisions by logic and facts. So while some people may be logical and factual, other people, most people, are basing their decisions on emotions. And the last thing to keep in mind is that they're buying for their reasons, not yours. In other words, you need to focus what your elevator speech is on something that would be of interest to them, something that would get their attention and something that would get them to, uh, to think. So next slide here. So bottom line, you've got eight seconds to grab their attention. Um, and you need to be ready. And by ready, I mean you need to have practiced this. So one of the things about, uh, you know, that I see often is somebody says, hey, what is it that you do? And uh, people hesitate uh, because they're really not sure how they want to answer that question. Um, and so the idea that I'm trying to put across here is that you've got eight seconds to get their attention. You need to be ready and you need to be very positive in terms of what it is that you do. Now, uh, go to the next slide here, Destiny. I've, I've come up with a four-step process for doing this. And I think um, we shared a worksheet, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, but the the four steps are, you know, who are you? And, and you know, what's your name? And 
a lot of times I don't think you need to do your full name. You just need to do your first name because people often just remember the last thing that they say. And most of the time, people's last name is a little more complicated than their first name. So, you know, who are you? And then what do you do? Uh, an action verb. And who are your customers or your audience? Large industries, small services, nonprofits. Uh, and then the last one is what value do you bring to the table? Why would I, as a uh, potential client, want to hire you to do my job here? Okay. So next slide, we talk about what things we may not include and maybe not the company name, maybe not a title, um, no adjectives or adverbs. I, I'm a super networker. I'm a this or that, you know, and keep away from how you do things because that takes a lot more time than talking about what you do. The other thought is business labels, titles, attorney, trainer, programmer, engineer. Um, what happens with those is when you tell someone you're an attorney, a lot of times they might run away, but it gives them, they have an impression of an attorney that they're going to substitute for their impression of you because you've now told them that you're an attorney. Uh, so stay away from those sorts of things and also stay away from industry jargon, as we saw in that slide before, and be as simple as possible in terms of what it is that you're uh, that you're trying to get across. So let's look at some examples here. Next slide. Um, hi, I'm John Fisher. I'm a consultant and I've been doing this for over 30 years. That's pretty boring, pretty standard. Uh, how about, hi, I'm John Fisher. I help mid-sized companies increase sales and profits. Okay, that's a little bit more uh, in turn of what the value is that comes to the table here. Some other examples on the next slide. I help hospitals save time and money, create technology peace of mind, okay? Um, find ways to increase profits for mid-sized transportation companies. And it's okay to be very specific uh, in terms of, of who it is that, you're, that, you're help, that you help. Uh, I have a friend who tells people that he works with mid-sized manufacturing companies that have operations in Vietnam. Um, and yeah, that may sound a little bit odd, but if people then respond back to that with, oh, that's interesting, uh, why, why that particular focus, he comes back and says, well, I, I'm married to a Vietnamese woman. I speak Vietnamese. I've been to Vietnam multiple times. I know the culture. I can help you in terms of translating what your business needs are into the Vietnamese culture. Now, if you are a small or mid-sized manufacturer with operations in Mexico or India, he's not as helpful. And so what he wants to do is he wants to make sure that his potential clients um, are aware of what he's doing and that there's a fit. So, you know, if somebody doesn't have operations in Vietnam, he's gonna go on to the next person and say, thank you very much, I you know, enjoy talking with you. Um, because what he wants to do is make sure that his value is at the, at the highest level for his potential clients. So what do you want to get out of this? What happens when you tell people, hey, I help hospitals save time and money? Let's go to the next slide. Here's what your ideal responses are. Wow, uh, let's find some time to talk about that. Because you may be in a situation where you don't have time, but what they may do is they may say, well, you know, I'd really like to hear about that. My company's been looking for somebody like that. Um, or, hey, how do you do that? And what that does is that gives you permission to spend a little more time talking about what it is that you do. So you've gotten their attention. Now you can fill in the details. Whereas if you'd provided them a lot of those details before, they may have gotten lost in translation. Uh, and so, um, you know, ideally, hey, that's interesting. Tell me more about that is, a, is the best response that, that you can get here. Now, the next slide is our worksheet. And uh, hopefully you guys have uh, been able to download that. Uh, and uh, what I'd like for you to do is to uh, 
uh, take a look at this and while we're talking, sort of write some ideas down. Uh, what is it that you do? Who are you? Uh, who, what are your potential clients or markets? And then the last one, uh, with them, what's in it for me? That's the client perspective. That's what value do you bring that is something recognizable by the client. So uh, next slide here is, uh, you know, take notes and then we can review this later on for those people who are brave enough to uh, put their elevator speeches out there for, uh, for discussion. What I find in these seminars, and I've done quite a few of them, is that a lot of times it is, uh, it's, it's a very interesting process to do an elevator speech, and then it's even more interesting to get critiques back from people. Because as we'll see later on, you can think it's the best elevator speech in the world, but if other people don't think so, then it's really not. And the only way you can find that out is to tell people about it. And so let's go through the steps one by one. Here's the next slide. So I'm name or organization. Now organization, um, you know, if you're fundraising, for example, I'm from, you know, X organization. Uh, it may be helpful to say the organization. It may not be helpful. In other words, if you're from, you know, Bradley, Spencer, and, uh, Ferguson, um, nobody knows what that is. But if you're from, let's say, the American Heart Association, yeah, that's a, that's a recognizable uh, name. Again, we've got to be careful that people don't have a preconceived notion. Um, but if it has high value, uh, then that's it. If not, just, hey, I'm John. And, um, you know, you can exchange the full contact information later. Let's go to the next slide. So here's where you put in an action verb. I help, I enable, I deliver, um, I work with. And so those are the kinds of things that get people interested to say, okay, what is it that you do? I help organizations of this type do this. It's a simple process. People can remember it. And um, it actually then hopefully will intrigue them. On to the next slide. So your target market could be just clients in general, if you have no um, particular industry or um, you know, area. Uh, it could be service firms, nonprofits. Think about what your target market is. And, and this can be different. You can have different elevator speeches for different situations. Let's say, again, let's say you're a fundraiser. You might have a different elevator speech than if you were working as a recruiter uh, and doing uh, some interviews uh, for potential employees. Sometimes they ask you, hey, what do you do? Uh, and so you need to, um, you need to understand uh, really what your, what's your target market? Who is, it, who is it that you're talking to? Who is it that wants you to do this job for them? Now on to the next slide. So this is the value. So, you can do a couple things in here. You can focus on what they might gain if they brought you in. You might focus on what they might lose. There's, I mitigate risk. You know, I help people avoid these kinds of, um, um, these kinds of situations. And the idea is to focus on what's in it for them, you know. Um, so choose a verb and a noun. I avoid risk. I eliminate uh, embarrassment. I, you know, save uh, money. I do various things like that. That's, those are, those are things that people can fully understand. So next slide, let's put it all together here. Okay, click again. I'm John Fisher. I help companies save time and money selecting technology solutions, or I help my clients take the mystery out of technology change, or I help companies turn technology issues into higher profits. So you can have a few of these and try them out. And the idea is validate them, as I said before. Validate them with potential clients, with clients that you have now, to say, hey, is this representative of what it is that I've been able to provide for you? Uh, and that way you can get really good feedback uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the elevator speech. So next slide. Your turn. Uh, so I think we've gotten a few in here. 
if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, Destiny, let's see. Um, Do you want me to go ahead and read them for you, John? Uh, I got them here. That's good. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, from Sherry, uh, who we all know, uh, I own a consultancy that provides executive management services to associations and nonprofits. So um, is this uh, from Sarah, it says not really succinct. Is that a critique of Sherry's elevator speech? It sounds like it might be. Um, and the, uh, but the idea here is own a consultancy, which potentially gets in people's minds. Oh, I've dealt with consultants in the past, right? Um, executive provides executive management services to associations and nonprofits, I'm thinking executive management services might not, might not know what that is. Do I provide uh, executive directors? Do I provide advisors? Do I provide all of that? Um, and so, you know, while I think this is very succinct, I think um, it's definitely something that might want to, um, um, might want to work on here. And thanks, Sherry, for volunteering there. Uh, here's Don. My name is Don. I help manage the Midwest's largest association of corporate businesses or cooperative businesses. And um, this is great. This is a good, uh, succinct uh, elevator speech. But what I don't think I see in here is um, I help manage the associations, but um, how does that provide value? Because managing sometimes isn't quite a value proposition. I know there's the whole management leadership issue, there's a bunch of other things, but that might need to, to clarify a little bit more in terms of what it is that, um, that you do. Got another one here. My name is Sarah. I create and implement marketing campaigns for nonprofits that meet goals, stay within budget. I bring experience working with traditional channels and new media like PPC and SEO. Now that's the first, I would stop at the first sentence. Um, and um, because what you're getting into in the second sentence is really how you're doing it. Uh, and I would wait for the person to say, oh, okay, that's interesting. Or, you know, I'm really not interested in that sort of stuff, but uh, nice meeting you anyway. Um, so then, then you've got a, um, you know, if, if they're interested, you have permission to then go on. So here's, uh, from Kevin. My name is Kevin. I connect passionate association executives who seek to leverage all things digital to advance the cause of associations and improve their organization's operations. Um, a lot of stuff, um, a lot of good stuff in there. Is there a way maybe to shorten that? Um, is, there, um, is there a way to think, um, you know, I help with digital, um, digital transformation. I hate to use that because that's kind of a technical term, but one of the thoughts here is let's make it simple. Let's make it easy for people to, um, uh, to think about what it is, uh, what it is that, uh, that you do. Uh, and then the um, next one here, let's see. Emily, I teach mission-driven organizations and social impact businesses how to develop data-driven strategies, revitalize their programs, and streamline operations. So um, I'm thinking that's a lot of stuff as well. So maybe maybe one sentence, maybe less words um, on those. So, you know, thanks people for, for, for providing these. I think these are great. And remember, I'm one person with one opinion about these. So my opinion is not definitive. Um, my opinion is simply my opinion, but uh, I think go on to the next slide here, Destiny. Um, this is a good start. And as we all know, the first draft of anything is often not what we really want. Uh, and so let it roll around in your head, repeat it, validate it, uh, and make multiples, uh, and then start over. Uh, keep working on it and keep thinking about how it might need to change. Now go to the next slide. So 
after they say, tell me more, then you really do need to get a little more time here. So you've done your verbal pitch. Uh, what I do is I have what I call a biz on a page, which is a one page um, a description of the things I do using some graphics and some, uh, some color to make it a little more interesting. And then if they really are interested, I've got what I call a professional profile, which lists a bunch of projects I've worked on and successes. And then maybe uh, you have enough time to do a presentation, but don't do the presentation in the elevator. Uh, wait for them to be uh, to be interested here. Um, so one of the uh, age old adages, next page, is um, you have two ears and one mouth and use them in that proportion. When you're trying to talk to a potential client or a potential someone that's interested in your services, ask them questions because you may not be able to find what the solution is if you don't at them, get them involved in the conversation. Um, one of the, the quotes I like is, when you talk, you repeat what you already know. When you listen, you learn new things. So one of the goals of an elevator speech is to get a conversation going, to get them started on it, okay? And so next slide, um, be prepared, smile, get their contact information and follow up. So you've got 10 seconds and you've got a minute, then you may have 10 minutes, then you may have an hour, depending on the interest that is shown here. So um, next slide, I think we hopefully have, uh, have um, um, gotten our goals uh, and objectives. And uh, any questions? Do we have time to take a couple of questions or not? Yes, do you need? Yes, we do. So if you have a question, go ahead and place it in the, the chat bar and we can get those to John. But John, as we're waiting for some questions, I have a question. Sure. Um, I have a lot to tell people about myself. Why, why can't I take more than eight seconds? Um, because uh, really people start to wander, their minds start to wander after eight seconds. So. We have to keep in mind what the job is that our elevator speech is doing. The elevator speech's job is to get their attention, to get them interested enough in what you're providing to ask you more. So if you're interesting, then you definitely have more than eight seconds. Uh, if it's not interesting to them, then you don't really want to take more than eight seconds because you don't want to waste everyone's time. So the, the idea is it's, it's not to explain everything you do, it's to get them to start a conversation, to start asking questions. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, thank you. Sure. Um, it looks like we had a question come in from Lou Ann. What does um, WIIFM stand for? And my second question is, can you analyze my pitch? Yeah, well, WIIFM is what's in it for me. Um, and that is something that you need to take from your, um, from, from your client's perspective. Um, and so here's, uh, I believe, Luann, this is, I'm Katie. Uh, I help our members maximize the value of their membership. You know, from my perspective, I think that's spot on, you know? Um, so, the, the idea is you're working with nonprofits, they wanna maximize the value of their membership. And then they're gonna say, um, yeah, how do you actually do that? Because we've been trying to do that for years and we haven't been very successful. Then you go to the next step and then you go to the next. Okay. Um, okay, one last question, unless we get a couple more. Um, I want to know what is the best elevator speech you have ever heard. Um, you know, one of the one of the best speeches I, I ever heard was from someone who was a they were a, a developer, a programmer, but they worked on prosthetic devices, and so it was. Hi, I'm uh, Bob, and I help people walk again. You know, that just it, like, wow, it, that, that struck me as, okay, they've actually understood what the end value is of what they're doing. 
they're a developer. They're writing programs to help those prosthetic devices be created and to be refined and maybe even to be used. But they didn't focus on that. They focused on the value to the end customer. I help people walk again. That's pretty powerful. I believe so. Uh, it was powerful yeah. to me. I wanted to know more. So while we have just a couple more minutes, would you like to um, analyze some of the ones we didn't get to um, just a little bit ago, like Mona's? Let's see here. Elevator speech. Um, oh, hi, I'm Mona. I lead teams of subject matter experts to develop and deliver content, databases, and events for associations. These projects increase member engagements in advanced science. Now, that's pretty interesting. I would say the second sentence is more interesting than the first sentence, because um, that's I could do that for anything. But, you know, hi, Mona, and I lead teams. I, I help create projects to increase member engagement in advanced science. And and that's one of those things where it's like, really? How do you advance science? What What's going on there? That's a, a really nice um, sort of teaser there. So I would take the second sentence. And and think about when you're creating an elevator speech, you're, you're very obviously very passionate about what you do and you want to get as much information as possible. But think about if you do more than one sentence, which one might be more interesting to people? Let's see. Oh, wow. I'm Annie. I work with organ transplant professionals to get them and help them improve quality of life and move the field of transplant forward. So um, also very good, um, you know, organ transplant professionals, um, you know, and, and um, you, you want to be careful to not say something you don't do, but I'm almost thinking of, you know, I help people, I help patients uh, improve their quality of life. Um, it, transplant patients increase, improve their pro quality of life. So what you're doing is you're helping the professionals do that, but, you know, help uh, help professionals uh, improve the, the patient's quality of life is, uh, is a very compelling statement here. Um, help associations grow and members to improve their business. Help associations grow and help the association members improve their business is what I'm thinking here. Um, and that's, um, that's two things. So I would, even though it's short, I would pick one or the other. Um, help association members improve their business. I help associations grow. Uh, though that's a very simple thing, and it always, I think, would re we would get a oh wow, how do you do that? And that's what you want. Great, fantastic. Thanks a lot, everyone, for listening. Uh, the. Uh